What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Code with Kylie video. I'm Kylie and I'm still filming from the floor today because I still am part of No Desk Squad. Anyways, we're talking about inheritance and polymorphism. These are big words, but I promise you that they're actually very helpful concepts in object-oriented programming that will help you make your code more concise and more flexible. So let's just dive right into it. Inheritance basically allows us to create new classes known as child classes based off of an existing class known as a parent class. And just as the name implies, the child class will actually inherit the attributes and functions of the parent class. This is really good for organization and avoiding duplication of code. If you have two very, very similar classes, then you can put all the similarities into the parent class and have these child classes basically be branches of those. Okay, so of course let's use an example and you guys all know that I really love dogs. So I'm gonna use dogs as my example. All right, I wanna come up with some classes to represent various breeds of dogs. For example, Samoyeds, Poodles, and Golden Retrievers. So if I wanted to, I could define everything like this. So once I've defined all of these, I'm going to initialize them. Of course, we have to add self in there. And let's say for simplicity, we're just going to give all these dogs a name. So self.name equals name. And this is going to go through all of these like this. Right off the bat, you can see that we have the same initialization function literally copy and pasted three times. In addition, if we had another function like likes walks. And of course, all of our doggos like wackos, so we are going to paste these everywhere. So what we're seeing here is a lot of code repetition because these two functions are basically copy and pasted for all three of these dogs. If we take a step back and we think about this in real life, well, Samoyeds, Poodles, and Golden Retrievers, they're all a breed of dog. So what we can do in Python is we can actually add a parent class to all of these classes, which unifies them as that type of object. We can create a super class called dog, which basically would have all the properties and functions of a dog to share among all of the breeds. So here we can say init, and then we can give it even other things like age, friendliness, etc. And here let's do self.name equals name, self.age. We're just initializing all of these attributes within our class. All the doggos like the wackos, so we're doing likes walks self. And this is true. Okay, so now that we have the super class, remember what we said about how inheritance basically allows the child class to inherit from the parent class? All we would have to do is classify our three breeds as child classes of dog. And how do we do that? Here in our class definition, all we have to add is parentheses and then within the parentheses, the parent. So here we have Samoyed and then this basically means Samoyed is a child class of dog. And here we can even erase this. And of course we would input the name, age, and friendliness, but then down here, instead of reinitializing the exact same thing, we don't have to copy and paste that code. Instead, we can just do super, and this means call the super class dot init. So here this is saying in the super class, call this initialization function. And then we're going to pass in the parameters that belong up here. So that's name, age, and friendliness. And then I'm going to do that with all my doggos down here. And change these so that they are now subclasses of dog. Ta-da! All right, so let me just show you guys how this works. You can see that in Samoyed, we haven't defined likes walks. But if I create Sammy the Samoyed and I pass in a name, so Sammy, an age, two maybe, 
and then friendliness. Let's do a scale of 1 to 10. Let's say 10. Let's say that Sammy is 10 out of 10 friendly. Okay, so now what we can do is we can print Sammy.name, Sammy.age, and Sammy.friendliness. Okay, so we see that for Sammy, we get that the name is Sammy, the age is 2, and Sammy's friendliness is a 10 out of 10. So here, this initialization function has actually called this one up here to set the attributes. Okay, so one other cool thing is we can actually print Sammy.LikesWalks. And again, we haven't actually defined LikesWalks as a method under Samoya, but we have in the superclass. And now you can see that it will actually inherit from that super class, so we can actually call this function likes walks. Okay, so look, it's true. And just like in real life, we can also have mixes of these dogs, which would mean that we have more than one parent. So this is something called multiple inheritance, where you can have more than one super class. And the child class would actually inherit all the properties and attributes of all the parent classes. So here, if I want to create a golden doodle, maybe, then I can say golden doodle, and this is going to inherit from poodle and golden retriever. And of course, we initialize this, just like how we initialize these other things. Let's call this golden doodle Goldie. Goldie the golden doodle. And Goldie, age, let's do one. And friendliness, man, 10 out of 10, of course. We can print these things again. And we see that Goldie is age one, friendliness 10 out of 10, and likes walks. All right, so one reason that we might want to define Golden Doodle with Poodle and Golden Retriever as separate classes is because maybe Poodles and Golden Retrievers both have properties that we actually want to pass down into this Golden Doodle. So for example, our shedding amount. Well, Poodles don't shed, so here we're going to return zero. And then for Golden Retriever, let's do one that's like define fetch ability. And this is a method. So let's say the self.age is less than two. Maybe the golden retriever is not that great at fetching yet, so we'll give it an eight out of 10. So return eight. But let's say else if the age is less than 10, so this is maybe something between two and 10, we can return 10 out of 10. And then otherwise, which means that it would actually be older than 10, we can return seven because maybe they're a little bit slow, I don't really know. So here, let's try Sammy. Can Sammy fetch? Well, we haven't defined this fetchability function under Samoyeds, and it's not defined under the superclass dogs. So when I call Sammy.fetchability, it would actually come out to an error because this function is not defined under Samoyeds. But if I have Goldie, it actually inherits both of these from the parents. So we can call its fetchability and its shedding. So we can print Goldie.shedding amount. And then we can also print Goldie.fetchability. And here we get a shedding amount of zero and a fetchability of eight because Goldie is less than two years old. Ta-da. Okay, so just to quickly sum things up a little bit, inheritance means that you have children classes that can actually inherit properties from parent classes, and then multiple inheritance means that you can actually have more than one parent where the subclass will inherit from all of the parents. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about polymorphism. Now, what in the world does polymorphism mean? Polymorphism quite literally means the ability to take multiple forms. From an object-oriented standpoint, this actually means that a child class 
that inherits a function from maybe the parent class can override that function and give that function a completely new set of rules to follow. So again, let's do an example with our dogs. Under our dog, maybe we can define our bark. All dogs might bark like woof. So we can return woof as our bark for all of our dogs. And that's just our default bark. Okay, so we have Sammy and we have Goldie. Let's just see what their bark would sound like. Okay, so we're printing Goldie's bark and Sammy's bark. And both of them are woof. But we can actually change this for subclasses and make the subclass follow a different set of rules. Come down here and I define bark. This is polymorphism because we can actually override this and we can say arf arf maybe. Whereas maybe a golden doodle is saying something like aru or something, I don't know. Now let's listen to these dogs barks again. And just for comparison, I'm going to create a new dog object. Generic doggo equals dog and I'm going to name it Jean. It's going to be 10 years old and of course it's 10 out of 10 a good boy. So we're going to also say this generic doggo dot bark. Okay, so we're doing Goldie, Sammy, and then generic doggo. So we see that Goldie is now barking like a roo, but then Sammy does arf arf, and this generic doggo goes woof. This is not a very complicated function, but it is still a function that we are overriding. Basically, we're saying, hey, for this specific type of dog, because it's in the subclass and we've given it new instructions, ignore the parent instructions and follow these instructions instead. So for any type of function that's even more complicated, we actually don't look at what the parent has. And this function now takes a new form, polymorphism. So these are kind of all the building blocks of object-oriented programming. With inheritance and polymorphism, we can get rid of repetitive code and organize our classes better. And we can also have the flexibility to change any of the functions to make sure that they are actually doing what we want from a lower class. How cool is that? Anyways, thank you guys for all joining me for my beginner Python videos.